first time I read it. Yeah. You don't you don't have any recollection of that. Are we on? Okay. Welcome to the uh, Camden Harbor Committee meeting, January 14th, 2020, contrary to what the agenda says, 2019. Okay, in order to facilitate the public's understanding and to maintain a complete and orderly meeting, the format and procedures will be as follows. The meeting is being electronically recorded and minutes are being taken. Minutes shall consist of a condensed summary of the facts of the meeting. Meetings are broadcast in their entirety on cable channel 22, I'm sorry, on cable channel 1303, or YouTube Town of Camden. To maintain order, all comments or questions must be directed through the chair. Public comments are encouraged and important to the process to maintain Clarity, please exclude irrelevant and unduly repetitious comments. Comments. Each speaker must state his or her name, residence, and connection or interest in the topic prior to speaking. Please speak into the microphones. First item on the agenda, non-agenda items. I have one. Okay. Um, Jeremy Martin, Planning and Development Director. Um, I don't know. I think some of these, some folks here may remember this, and this goes back a number of years. Um, the Army Corps and the town had worked together um, to look at the possibility of doing a breakwater system out, um, out in the harbor to protect the outer harbor anchorages as well as um, infrastructure on the on the shore um, the Harbor Committee worked Steve how long ago was that 2016 I think is when they Harbor Committee looked at this and then the Army Corps got involved do you remember well it, it starts back yeah maybe I'll let Steve continue yeah, this this starts back I think in the 30s or 40s and well, I think in 09 Mark Mark Haskell came up and he was we we're going over again to see if we, they wanted the town was interested, still interested in having a, a, a breakwater. A possibly Mark having, Haskell is an Army Corps person. Exactly. Correct. Yeah. Mark not, not Mark Haskell not the from global the global photographer. Mark Haskell. Yeah. yeah. Who has, does get himself in the news occasionally. So, so I remember at a select board meeting, him standing up saying, um, "Here's what it would have cost for a breakwater in 1939." Here, then we redid it, and we, here's one in 1970. We redid it again, and obviously it was much more. And I think this was the fourth time they'd looked at it, and that was back then. And we were like, boy, we, it would have been nice if we had done this back in 1930, if, if the town had wanted to break water. Um, and then it came up about, yeah, in 16, uh, I believe it was 2016, they came and said, uh, we're interested, we have some, let's talk of some extra money and some, the municipal, so, you know, looking for a municipality that, would uh, benefit at breakwater, and so we started doing these feasibility studies. I spent many hours on the phone with two different people, at, you know, and we went through the feasibility study and we passed, which meant we got launched to a different level. And then I started getting more phone calls. Um, the Har Harbor Committee at that time didn't agree that we that the town wanted one, and so they basically it basically went to bed. Um, but it didn't totally go to bed because when we, it was time for them to throw out the, you know, everything, the file, I got a call from Army Corps and uh, I forget the gentleman's name. Adam Burnett. Yeah, Adam. And he's like, Steve, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't throw it away. Uh, we've been working on this so long and I think it would be such a great spot. And, uh, and so it's back in the water supply. Um, you know, we're, we're talking about about possibilities, um, we're even talking about where we would get uh, where, where we, we would get the granite to build this. So we've we've been in contact with Crotch Island, and um, so it's still a possibility. And we're still talking about. It. I guess Jeremy can. Kind we of are, uh, you know, and 
what happened is we um, the Army Corps made a federal interest determination is what it what it's called and we are on their list um, we can't stay on that list forever they're ready to take us off that list if the town does not um, move forward um, and commit to some sort of project here um, I think there's you know from my perspective I'm, I'm new into this piece you know this has been again like Steve said this has been going on since the 60s um, and the Army Corps has been looking at it um, and we wanted to just bring it to the Harbor Committee's attention that this is out there Army Corps is very interested in doing it they have um, significant dollars to put into it they'll end up maintaining it um, in the future um, and it would certainly, uh, you know, I've, I'm not a boater, but I've talked to many of boaters here, and the outer harbor is um, a challenge. Um, and this could significantly improve that situation. Army Corps recognizes it. They have to do cost-benefit analysis. They looked at the economics of it, and um, they, they believe it's a good project and ought to move forward. Um, they have funds available to have it move forward, um, but the town would need to commit some cost-share funds to do it. Um, I think there's many ways to get there in terms of how we would come up with cost share funds. This would basically run on the ledges. Correct. <laughs> the harbor. Correct. <clears throat> I think this would, would tie in with the uh, sea level rise issues um, protecting against storm surge in the harbor. I'm going to pass out another one. This is kind of another follow-up meeting. This is a Harbor Committee um, group, Matt, some group. It's not a wall. Huh? It's not a wall. So they can't it. Well, it would, but it would reduce the surge. Yeah. I don't think so. Nope. I mean, the Army Corps has indicated it would protect the town somewhat from, from storm surge infrastructure. Okay. You're referring to well, okay. I think all of the above is what I my understanding. So I guess we need to figure out what storm surge means. Are we talking about just wave action or are we talking about raise and water level? I understand. Storm surge in my book means raise and water level. So So I'm confused uh, on this map. Because what I was talking about is there's an outer barrier in the ledges. You still have an opening going around Sherman's Point, but then uh, I think there are exactly other three. things like coming off Dillingham Point and in town. Is that are those more walls, barriers, whatever? They appear to be alternatives, correct? Possib possibilities. So it's not you doing all of this stuff. If you didn't do the big outer one, I, I, then you do three or four little ones. I don't think. I don't think it's an either or. I think it's a to be determined. And what I can do is I could probably reach out to Army Corps and see if Adam and, and the group can get up here and maybe chat about it with, with the Harbor Committee. What do you think, Steve? I think they, they usually like coming up here. Summertime especially. They had like three. <laughs> they, had, not January. They, had, they had three different proposals. This is just one of them. And I mean, this was the initial feasibility study that they did, and I can provide, I'll email this to everyone. It's quite a document. They spent a lot of money on this. Um, and in the end, they need to do, an, they need the to do another on one. Um, so this is 2016. Yeah, okay. So this produced I'm, that document. I'm, this is vaguely in my memory. Yeah. But the, the exact year is fuzzy, but. Do they speak at all about? I mean, we talk about pollution, and one of the problems with why the harbor is polluted is there's not a lot of water. Is this going to actually? Um, the Army Corps doesn't believe so, no. And that's part of all this is they end up doing the environmental studies and all that is, is part of the final um, project. So, so we've got a uh, uh, pretty extensive meeting today. So this this is. Just to introduce us to yes, what's and, going on here. Yes, because the Army Corps again reached out and, and they said, is Cameron ready to do something? We'd like them to pull the trigger. We want to pull the trigger. We've got the money to do it on their end. Um, I think they're looking at spending upwards of $10 million, I think, on this around. When are they going to say we're done waiting? 
I would assume it's going to be relatively soon if we don't do something. I mean, I, I think we've been um, kind of waiting. So, so what's our role here? You'll, you'll send us. A I'll copy send you of that, this and everybody. And then I'll reach it. out to Army Corps and say that the Harbor Committee would like them to come up and give a little presentation on it, um, and then we can go from there. That would at least keep our foot in the door. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Door. I mean, they did look again. They look at the economics of it um, and what it will protect, <laughs> and that's all part of this study, and it is part of the bigger study that'll happen. All right. Sure. Any other thoughts, Steve? No, I think it's exactly right. We did get these guys uh, updated real quick to what's going on, and then we can have discussion what to do next after that. Okay. Mark, okay. you can email me everyone's email, or maybe yes. I'll just forward it to you and you can forward it off to everyone else. Uh, Would that be easier? Forward it to Liz. Okay. Thanks, Liz. <laughs> Uh, anything else I have in terms of documentation from the core on this, I'll forward along as well. Okay. And under new uh, business, I just have a concept maybe just for us to contemplate for a little while. And it concerns parking on the public landing. Um, And I, I really haven't been a proponent to give the day sailors parking permits, but the town has elected to do that, uh, and the Harbor Committee feels it's appropriate. So um, my reasoning was I just wanted to make everything equitable down there. So my concern is if if they can park there all day long because they're doing business down there, what about somebody else that is is maybe renting dock space and they're there the longer than two hours in the dock to work on their boat and they have to conform to the two hour parking. So why why should they be inconvenienced when when it's inconsistent. So um, my suggestion is that that we give the harbor master, say, six parking passes that he can hand out at his discretion daily to people in need. For instance, somebody comes in with a boat, and they're going to spend two days, three days. They're paying dockage at the town dock. They have a rental car. What do they do with it? Steve can give them a parking pass. They can park there for the period that they're there, and problem solved. Um, the other concept is just flat out eliminate two-hour parking on the public landing. If I mean, if it's appropriate for. I mean, we've got, we've got, uh, now we've got 21 or 22 people that can park there all day long because the town says they can. So why not just let everybody make it, make it consistent right across the board? I don't like it. Okay. I mean, I really well, don't like people coming in and buying it as part of docking anyway. And I understand the argument that, well, if some people are allowed to park there all day, why not the businesses that back up there, and et cetera? Yeah. And I understand the fairness of that, but I still don't like the idea that it's just going to get blocked up. And, and this the is people who are yeah. coming to Camden to see Camden uh, have less and less chance of parking down yeah. there. Uh, so. And again, I mean, one bad decision is made doesn't mean we should make two. Yeah. But um, I mean, this, we have a lot to go through today. So this is just a concept. It's throwing out, to, being thrown out there for thought process. That's all. Yeah. And and part of it, I mean, I, I've been, I used my boat down there longer than two hours. And when I go out and I haul traps. 
um, I've been conscientious about parking down there to the point, I mean, I carry a bucket of lobster bait from Cross Street down to the docks uh, because I don't want to park down there for more than two hours. I want to leave it open for other people. I don't feel that way anymore. I feel like it's inconvenient for me and I'm doing it so that a select few have the ability to park down there all day long, every day. So, anyways. Just, well, if we're going to go into that, then I want to talk about the parking over at the launching ramp, which is a uh, big problem. Well, it is, but the town doesn't own any of their property. Well, actually, they own the rights of way, so they actually, they've eliminated a lot of parking spaces that were there for no good reason. Uh, so, I mean, it's the whole parking problem in town, and I understand on C Street that you don't want to be parking on both sides of the street. It gets a little narrow, but uh, there's just parking issues all over town. There are. There are. Well, the town's provided a parking lot over there at the within walking distance of the launching ramp. I, that was really for trailers. And the, what I'm talking about is the probably five spots right on whatever the name of that little street is, yeah. that were taken so, away for no good reason. Again, it's just food for thought. Yeah. So um, Plenty of munchies we, to come we, we, don't, we don't need to discuss it any further. <laughs> uh, we just, at, at, a, at a future meeting, when we have uh, nothing else to concern us. Okay, so um, it has been suggested... Well, first of all, let's do the uh, minutes. <coughs> December 4th minutes. Any changes or corrections? Motion to approve uh, December 4th minutes as is. To approve as is. Okay. We have a second. Second. All in favor? 5-0. <clears throat> December 11th minutes. Changes or corrections? None. So we'll hear a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? I wasn't here, so I'll abstain on that one. Okay. Um, it's been suggested because we haven't heard from the harbor master in the last few meetings because we've run out of time that we move your report up to the head of the meeting. Huh. <laughs> Here I thought it was on purpose because he didn't want to hear me talk. <laughs> so he stopped preparing his report. <laughs> um, so do you want me to go now? Uh, sure. Yeah, prepared you would, report anyways. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, well, once again, this was handed to me. This is a, uh, a state permit that someone is, is requesting for a, um, a pier and float on their property. It's um, down south, almost at the Rockport line. And um, it's going to be coming to your table. I just wanted to share it with you. It's, um, two, I think it's 260, maybe, is it? Yeah, I should say. George Sherman. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> I believe that it's going to pass this, you know, state, so then it's going to go to the, the town and it's going to go to this table. Um, I can get together with one of you, one of you folks. You came to mind, so you're pretty good at, at uh, particulars and not missing anything. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, and basically, when we get a, a broader, um, you know, a, a more detailed, you know, once they actually file for us, we can look and say, okay, 
the length of this overall pier is within our specs and the, the float dimensions, you can kind of help me look that'd at that. That'd be the main concern. Yeah, that'd be yeah. the main concern. For the permits. For the Who's clothes. the engineer? Uh, it's an engineer that I'd never heard of. Okay, actually. so it's not Will. No, Pinnacle Hill Engineering. I've never heard of them, but. Where is it located exactly? Exactly. I've got a copy of the full um, permit document that they sent to the DEP that came into our office last week. Um, it'll go to the Harbor Committee. It will also go to the Planning Board, so you know. I haven't even reviewed it yet. They didn't submit anything, any applications to us. They said we'll get applications once they get their permit from the state. It's a sequence. So, Steve, I'd like to be involved in that also. For sure. Is, would there be any conflict with me being on the Planning Board? I'll find. I'll look into it. For, I'll look into it for you. Well, that's that was my they question. What's get, the sequence? We both get to look at it. Right. right. But what if one says yay and one says nay? I'm, I haven't reviewed one of these yet in town, so I haven't gone into that section of the ordinance to look at both of them, how they match up. Um, I'll be doing that in the next Where couple of days. Roughly. It's, um, it's, it's okay, o Osier, yeah, Osier, Outer Harbor, Osier Point, like way, or Coastal Osier Harbor, Point. sorry. Yeah. It would be Coastal Harbor. Yes. It would, okay. Yeah, it's Coastal Harbor. Harbor. Out by Collie's Place, I believe. Yeah. Has the town enacted a moratorium on such things? No. We tried. Got nowhere a few years ago. And the thing with moratoriums, if you do, you know, the town <coughs> you have to vote on a moratorium, and then you actually have to make progress into um, <laughs> regulating or coming up with an ordinance to address the um, issue, the concerns that the community would have on why they voted to enact a moratorium and then you can only do those for at six months at a time and you must continue to up, you know um, redo that moratorium if you want it to keep it going um, you can't just enact a moratorium and do nothing you've got to actually move forward on on some ordinances to address people's concerns <clears throat> actually the harbor committee's discussion was the outer harbor not the coastal harbor mm. So yeah, so this will be coming, coming, in, and uh, we'll talk about it probably by next me meeting. I would think so. Yeah, good. Yeah. Anything else? Um, the harbor looks pretty good. The suck board meeting, the twenty second, the vote uh, for us to go forward and spend money, which has been set aside for the new float system, which connects the finger floats, small boat marina. And the uh, the new fisherman floats, so those are the ones with the old styrofoam, the the wooden ones that have not been um, replaced for a while. Um, hopefully that goes through because they're in pretty rough shape. I'm going to add something to the Harbor Master Report for Steve. Would be the um, Penobscot Bay Resiliency Project, which um, the State Marine Resources Maine Coastal Program funded. They looked at 12. Um, communities in Penobscot Bay um, at municipal infrastructure, working waterfront infrastructure um, to assess um, um, the issues concerned around um, sea level rise and uh, infrastructure. That report just got completed. Um, I can forward that off to you guys as well. You probably find that interesting. Um, they looked at, um, you know, engineering, structural issues um, with existing infrastructure, made some recommendations on how to address those to address sea level rise. Um, and that report was just finalized last week, and Steve and I will be meeting with Wood Associates, um, Wood Engineering, that did that, uh, along with DMR, um, I think next week, right, Steve? Yeah. Next week. Okay. 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 Yeah. Comment here regarding this uh, capital expense that Steve has provided. Is, or is it <clears throat> the practice of the town <clears throat> to do such things without any input from the committee, the harbor committee? Um, capital improvements in the harbor? Well, this is a long time coming, so I think this is actually went through the old harbor committee. That this up, this update, it's been. It didn't happen last year. We've been talking about this for a while. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, regardless, it's happening in the current year. Yeah. Well, isn't it regulation that styrene has to come out? 
It does. They, so they have to be replaced. Yeah. But, good question. Are there other capital expenses being considered? Um, not the last of the blue foam. Yeah. We've got a couple issues where we're not, we might not even be able to get all the styrofoam out in time because of the expense. <coughs> but yeah, this was a, more of a select board higher end thing that the town manager came to me and said, I ha she, remember, she says, I have the money, so how, tell me how much it's going to cost and the next, the next, you know, system you want to replace. And I said, well, we should do this one as the oldest. And uh, had custom floats come, look at it, measure it. Um, you know, I think it was, I, don't quote me on this, but I think it was 40,000? It was 40,000 to replace that. How long do these things last? We're giving them 17 years, I think, 18 years is what we. And this is just replace. There's something that's eight by eight that's being replaced by something eight by eight type exactly. thing. Yep. A new, a brand new material. Yeah. Different yeah, for yeah. That's that's it for my report, Mr. Okay. Chair. Thank you. Roos, would you mind if uh, we put the windjammer agreement ahead of you? Sure. Just for. Mm -hmm. They're all here. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Elliot and I have worked together, and we put together the uh, um, a draft proposal of windjammer agreements for both library park and public landing, and uh, this is by no means. Uh, Final, and we're looking for input. And uh, how? Is this a how typo? Yes, it is. <clears throat> so, how would we like to proceed on this? Should we just go down <clears throat> line by line item, or should we start with any? Any committee feedback and then public feedback? I'd like to just make an introductory remark here that uh, my, my approach was to uh, go through the existing windjammer agreement, the current agreement that expires this spring, and uh, take away the items that we've covered in our commercial passenger vessel license agreement and take whatever was left and put it in this agreement. That, that, that's the essence of what we see here. Okay. And just just for the Windjammer folks to understand, uh, this is the addendum. There is a, a boilerplate commercial passenger vessel agreement um, that precedes this, and this just becomes an addendum for each different location. I think I was overhearing something, but paragraph C talks about three and fifteen separate day sales. Right. That, so yeah, that's a typo. That, yes. It, what, it was a cut and paste. But it's meant to be three or fifteen. The select board has approved fifteen. <clears throat> by the select board that they made that change? Yeah, it was. It's just that there's a typo. Yes. That, that it said, spells out three, but then shows 15, whereas the other two numbers spell out three and show three, spell out seven and show seven. So I was asking, is it three or is it 15? <clears throat> but it was my understanding that it is 15, so I thought three times 15? That's a lot. Okay. So, uh, for simplicity, why, why don't we just start at the, we'll do uh, both addendums at the same time, and we'll just start at the top and work our way down and discuss each paragraph. Should we do the, the commercial passenger license agreement first? No, that's all, that's all been done. That's approved by the select board. It's a uh, finished document. Um, 
would it be beneficial to take um, comment from the wind general captains before we go through this or just because that might um, influence our discussion of each item uh, which one you want to do first I think certainly I would hope that we would want to hear from yeah all these guys yeah would would you like to anybody like to speak from the public first <clears throat> Hello there. Um, so my name is Barry King. My wife Jennifer Martin and I uh, own the schooner Mary Day. So um, we were coming to this table late, um, probably our own fault, but um, certainly because um, one of your board members were here because one of your board members actually reached out to us and said, hey, did you know this is coming up? And we're all like, no, we don't. Um, and one of the things um, that I think we'd love to have, uh, and it, whether it's written in agreement or not, I don't know if it's appropriate, but um, there is no one on the board who um, communicates with us about issues that affect our operation um, we, we looked at the, we were just sitting here looking at the, that proposed breakwater wave attenuation thing and we're looking at it going, <laughs> in the negative, <laughs> um, just navigationally um, at Northeast Point. So, so there are issues that come before this board um, that may not say the word windjammer on them, but certainly do influence our operation. Um, and if, if the town by which I mean the residents, um, you know, the creation of the harbor ordinance is trying to support the Windjammer fleet, then it would seem as though having some kind of a communication path between the license holders and the harbor committee would be, would streamline communication. And in, in, in some ways that's kind of how a lot of this you know, a lot of you came to be sitting here because there wasn't streamlined communication years ago. So, um, yeah, I don't know what you did wrong, but here you are. Um, so, uh, so, so, uh, so, one suggestion just from the outset is is to say, you know, is there someone on the harbor committee who could let us know when items um, that might concern the operation, the safe operation um, of the wind jammers and, and the wind jammers' ability to put a, a bright, shining face on this town. Um, we would appreciate, you know, some, some path of communication um, between the Harbor Committee and the wind jammers. Um, it was, you know, was something that was precedent in the past and, and has since been dropped. But um, so, so that's number one, and the reason I bring that up is because there are parts of the there are parts of the boilerplate agreement um, that we looked at and said, well, this is we could have had input on this. Um, one of the so so here's your list. Pencils ready. <laughs> so so one of the things we talked about is that um, it, uh, as business people who are trying to make long range plans for ourselves, our families, the community. Um, it, uh, creating a, a license agreement that would extend five years instead of three um, would be one thing um, that would work really well for us. And it's when I say for us, remember that um, our close friends close to home across the street at Camden National Bank or at Damascot Bank, and Trust, whatever, you know, whatever banks we happen to work with, when a loan officer looks at these and they say, Three years, then what? We have no answers. So, so in in an effort, uh, someday I may be too old to, to climb up over the rail and, and may be forced, you know, to sell sell the schooner. Um, yeah. So just just know that that would be um, a five year agreement would would help our business. Um, Uh, the concept of a, in your boilerplate agreement, of a license uh, to conduct cruises with a duration of three days or more um, has, 
it is an issue for us because there are we get charters to do overnight trips. Um, yeah, so so the proposal that we would have is just to talk about a windjammer cruise as being an overnight experience. Not that any of us want to get into doing overnights, but if we want to respect the intent or the you know the definition here, um, we no longer do you know strictly six day or three day or four day. We we accommodate whatever people are willing to pay us to do with a smile on our face. So I'm hearing that there's a crack between day cruise and three day cruises. Correct. And I'm wondering whether you know right now or for your own boat, how many trips would fall in that crack last year? Um, I, I don't have that number right off my head. I do. Um, so a three-day cruise. So <laughs> if the public isn't watching. Um, so, so a three-day cruise for us may board on a Sunday night, but we don't leave the harbor till Monday morning. We're back Wednesday. We're actually technically only away from the dock for two nights. Do you call that a three-day cruise? Do you call that a two-day cruise? Or two-night cruise? You know, it's, you know we, we market it as a three-day cruise because we believe the experience of having guests in town and having exposure to, to what this town has to offer is really important. So that's why we spend the first night at the dock, so people can go visit the shops, go visit the restaurants, have a chance to, to get to know downtown Camden, hike Mount Batty, whatever it is, um, enjoy the area before and after the cruise, but it, technically we're only away from the dock for two nights. So uh, as I look to the future, I'm trying to say, okay, I don't want someone saying, well, you're not really doing three-day cruises. Does that make sense? Because technically I'm all, I may only be away from the dock for 48 hours over the course of three days. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, a, you want, it's important that they change the definition to make it so it's just an overnight experience, don't put in the amount of nice it is. And that appears to be just in the agreement because the, the ordinance definition for a windjammer, um, traditionally rigged sailing vessel whose principal commercial operation is engaged in the trade of carrying passengers on cruises of at least one night or longer. Yeah, I'm just throwing that out there. That's what the definition of windjammer is, so at some point the select board must have wanted to make it three. Yep. Even though the definition allows says one night. So, so the if we couple that with the definition in paragraph C, uh, used on a regular basis for cruises with a duration of one night or more. Yep. Then that aligns it with the definition of the ordinance. I think everyone's happy with that change. I have a question: Is that first night on the dock count as the night? So they could go on a day sail the next day and count it as an overnight? They come in on Sunday night, stay overnight, go out in the morning and come back in the afternoon? Is that an overnight? So, so for us, passengers for us, our intention cruises. is to be away from the dock. Yeah, I understand. And I would say away from the dock for more than 24 hours. So, right, so we'd have to be at least one night away from the dock. They may be aboard the schooner for two nights, okay. one night in Camden, but certainly one night away from the dock. And so as we look at the definition of overnight, it means you're away from the dock overnight. But it does say yeah. cruises Cruise. overnight. Okay. Cruise. Right. So as long as they're out. Cruising. Now, the other thing would be the 15, uh, the 15 separate sales. So yeah, and that is, that's another item because I don't know how how things have been worked out with the library committee. I know historically some of the sentiments of um, the board of trustees for the library. Um, we certainly work incredibly closely with um, Mr. Jackson, who we see quite often doing his maintenance details in the, in the park, and we are super sensitive about our presence there, um, keeping things clean, you know, just being good neighbors. Uh, you know, I've I've had to go down and mow the lawn and weed whack, you know, down there when, you know, when it's, you know, been rainy and the, and the park crew hasn't been there. So, so we're working our, we're doing our best to be good neighbors, certainly at the head of the harbor um, where there are park maintenance issues. Um, so I don't, if, if 15 day sales is okay with a library board of trustees, that's great. 
um, to be honest, no one from the Library Board of Trustees has in many years since Mr. Late uh, spent quite a bit of time uh, during the park renovation down there. No, no one's ever from the library committee or, or from, excuse me, the library board of trustees has ever communicated any concerns about how many day sales we do or whether we inform them about doing a day sale or not. I, when I first got into the this thing, you know, I think I'm coming up on season 28, um, this, um, you know, we were really careful to make sure that we told at least, you know, the, the library um, board of trustees. Um, and then that kind of fell away and they would be like, well, why are you telling us? And it's almost like the, the collective institutional knowledge had kind of slipped away about why that was important um, from when the bursts were first created. So, so 15 is fine, um, but I think at, at some point, and maybe Jeremy, you have a better sense of this, of, of what, what is the relationship between the town the Library Board of Trustees and and the Windjammers in particular at the at the head of the harbor. Um, going back, uh, I don't know about a year now. I did meet with the um, Library Trustees just to give them um, heads up on some of these things, and I did bring this issue this fifteen day up to them. Um, and I think they just wanted a little more information. I, I'm sorry it kind of got dropped, um, but I can follow back up with them if you'd like. Does that make sense to you? I mean, I, I think it's both, it's. I, think I don't want. We don't want to get. Right. So those of us at the head of the harbor, we don't want to get caught in a pickle um, between the town, the library board of trustees. Again, we're just we're trying to be good neighbors over there, and yep. and you know put a bright shining face on things. But it's it's we feel like we're caught in some kind of a pickle that Understood. no one has been able to explain to us yet. Like who owns the yeah. park? Why don't I, um, why don't, I'll chat with, um, maybe I'll have Bob Falciani um, and I go to the next library trustees meeting and chat with them about this. Yeah, that would be great. Yep. And maybe so, a board so member? Barry, to, to address a couple of your other concerns, uh, five year term. Our harbor ordinance specifically says that the town cannot make more than three year commitments. Okay. okay. Yep. So that's off the table. That's Understood. Off the table. Yep. Um, as far as communication, are you on the uh, the harbor committee notification emails? Uh, no, I'm not. I didn't know it existed. Okay. So you can you can give Liz your email. Everybody can give Liz emails. And every time uh, agenda. an agenda comes up, agenda everybody gets cut. Yeah, yeah but I guess what's so. And what's going on. That that would be awesome. And and I think if you folks could be mindful that if a non-agenda item comes up, that might influence us. That that um, that we yeah that, that someone reaches out to us and says hey this was this came up as a non-agenda item so it, it's just a consciousness thing it's not a and and i mean we, a committee member did reach out to you uh, uh, yes and for which i'm incredibly thankful yes so i, I just like to like make it clear that we want to communicate yeah no yeah i have no doubt about that i just didn't um just wanted to talk about trying to have some kind of consciousness around it or mechanism in place. And it sounds like the email mechanism is a really effective one. So, so we'll look forward to receiving those. Um, the last thing about the boilerplate that we caused us to scratch our heads a little bit. Um, I got a, the terms of my, The terms of the agreement, um, thanks. So, so the terms of the agreement um, have, the time frame has extended from January 1 to December 31 over a three year interval. Um, our current leases extend from May 1 to April 30. Um, so there's a four year gap there that we've, or a four month gap there that we've already paid for um, and I don't know how 
if that's something the board has considered. Um, it also, it also, in terms of our operating season um, and our ability to, again, I'm not trying to say I'm going to sell the boat tomorrow. I don't, you know, I don't think there's anyone silly enough to, to ever want to do it. But, um, you know, as we look about, you know, our business cycle, fiscal year, if you will, um, or, or business year, it really does operate, you know, in that time frame from May 1st around to April 30th. And so if were we to um, were we to go through some kind of a transition um, with our boats, it would be, um, you know, sticking to that time frame um, would, I think, make it easier for at least for us um, to um, present a cycle to, to a potential buyer that would that would you know, give them more of a chance to get ready, get in line, get their businesses going, instead of getting, you know, slammed right off the bat with, um, you know, with a lease agreement, you know, maybe maybe one month into their ownership. So, does that make sense? It's a, again, it's a time frame that well, that me, made sense me, in the past. Let but. me explain the justification here. Um, what this does is it puts all the boats in the harbor on the same cycle. Understood. Okay, so when there are disputes, it's like everybody's in the room at the same time. So all the, everything could be resolved. Um, and what it does, I mean, if, if, you, if you wanted to, when is it, April 30th? It's a, the, the current agreement extends from May 1 to April 30, so, over a three-year So year say interval. April 30th, um, your contract is not renewed. From January to April, you've already developed your business plan, and now it's dissolved. Uh, so understood. This, yep. this kind of helps you. I, I, I would have thought it would have helped you on your business plan. It does. Um, yes, it, it does. And, and kind of one of my next bullet points was going to be requesting that um, that we have. Th there's a line in here about the about the town having the right to, you know just shut this whole thing down, you know, the select board can change this, this license, uh, license agreement with zero notification, it's like at their discretion with, you know, for probably for, you know, some really good reasons, but none of which include our best interests. And so, right. um, so we would love to see like there's, if something's gonna change dramatically, can we get 180 days notice? So we have the ability to regroup, to change and, Again, that's that's part and parcel to, to what you're saying about you know the January first is great. We we need a heads up if there are going to be significant changes made by the select board um, or recommended by right. the harbor committee. And that's exactly what this does. Okay, by doing the January first uh, renewal. Okay, so that that was the intent of that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mark, I'm. Um, the the other thing that we looked at that is part of I believe both the the head of the Harbor Library Park Windjammer Agreement and uh, license and also the boilerplate is the the loss of use by, you know by the docks being destroyed by fire casualty. Um, one of us who shall remain nameless went to the bank and they looked at that and they laughed. I said, what? <laughs> what kind of an agreement is that? <laughs> you know, what kind of a license is that? It, it is, uh, for, for every good reason in the world, you know, for the town's benefit, uh, I understand this, but for a, um, for anyone looking at our mortgage, and we all have mortgages, <laughs> for anyone looking at a, at a mortgage, you know, a lien, it's like, what, what do you have? What do you, what do you, you're hanging on a string here. The town can pull the plug whenever they want. And if the docks get destroyed, you know, you're good luck to you, you know, pat in the back. Um, so. What's the alternative? I mean, it's fairly standard. I think that if you're renting something and it's destroyed, it someone doesn't have insurance money. What? It gets rebuilt, restored with insurance money. But that doesn't mean that it's done now. Uh, it's, 
it takes time be. for to there, there could be an interruption in their business and right that's today. called insurance <clears throat> well uh, we're certainly not insured for that um uh, and I spent some time on the phone with Chris Richmond at the Allen Agency the other day. We're not, we're, we're insured for business interruption if something happens to our vessels, not if something happens to our docks. So um, what, what we're discussing here is on, uh, on the addendum, the last paragraph. Correct, uh, yeah. Loss of use. All right, you see at the end of that is uh, uh, in parentheses, is this necessary? So this was a discussion point. That, that we wanted to bring up. Um, yeah, what, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about the docks burning up? Yeah, where did this, That's, come, where did this come from? Where, where did this originate? The from, from the existing agreement. agreement. Well, about that, I asked Richard about, does he have any recollection of this? Yeah. Being brought into existence, and he says no. No, it's just. Yes, this, this has been in previous license agreements, yeah. um, and it's, but Richard can't recall the reasoning behind it. Right. He doesn't recall it happening, let alone the reasoning behind it. Well, so I mean, I talk about the reasoning behind it. I just look at it, and I, just, I that's exactly what I come up with. You know, what is the reason behind it? And it's just. <laughs> so that's why I suggested we talk about the original boilerplate first, I, and then talk about the addendums. The stuff that needs to be covered here that um, we're. we're we're just skipping over it. We're not taking right. responsibility for it. For? With regard to the wind jammers. Yeah, I think for, from our part, um, thank you, Ron. And I think from, from our part, um, because this license agreement is designed to protect the town, understandably, yep. and that's, that's your job and it's a job of the select board, um, there are elements of it that do leave us out in the cold um, with not a lot of recourse. Um, we've for years just said, well, you know, uh, you know, Mary Day has been birthed at the head of Camden Harbor since those docks were created, 1977, 76. Um, so, you know, we get we get used to seeing these things written into the license agreements, but it doesn't mean you know this is our moment to to as this is being reconsidered to actually say something. So it's the only reason I'm bringing it up, and and I'm not asking for the the harbor committee to come up with a you know some kind of agreement right here right now. I, I imagine this kind of thing requires great consideration, um, but I would like to point out that it that it does. It does not put us at an advantage when we walk into the bank um, to ask for a loan to. Any other agreements about the day sailors too? No. About what? If the docks get destroyed, the, uh, they might have to go somewhere else. Oh, what's we, there? No, I don't think it was. I was just going to say, I'll, I'm going to follow up with Bill, the town attorney, on loss of use section. Um, and just, yep. I think that's um, important. Um, well, that's the question. Why has it been imposed on the floats at the head of the harbor? But Understood. Not, that's going to be one. Other. It's going to be part of my questioning to Bill. Well, I don't think it's in the um, addendum for the from the public it land. Be in the boil plan, if it's anywhere. Use, so it is in both of them. Yeah. It's in both it's, addendum. But it's not on the day sailors. Right. But it's not on the. It's not on the day sailors. Yeah, so I think I think that's the question. Why wind jammers and not day sailors? Yep. I will ask well, that why question. Why is it there at all? I have that part of the question, too. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I think I mentioned item H um, in the boilerplate, which is the, which is the right. The town maintains the right to amend the agreement at its sole discretion. And <laughs> I, I think. I wonder when you see that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's, that's, I think I've referenced that a little bit earlier. And boy, could we request 60 days before? Which one is that? Well, that's, that it, that's in the boilerplate. Well, it's G in what you're looking at this morning. The, uh, in the addendum as well? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, it, there's some crossover between the boilerplate and the addendum. Um, so. I don't remember seeing that in the day sailor part, and I frankly right. don't understand. Right. If you've got an agreement that says this is our agreement until we decide to just leave you out of the cold, then that's not much of an agreement. No. Correct. Right. Correct. 
I think um, one, one thing that I will bring up, and I, I hope I'm speaking for everyone. I don't mean to be <coughs> hogging the mic here, but um, they actually, they made me. No. They, uh, so we look at, um, we look at the using the right of way um, at the park, and that, I think you are probably all brutally aware that there's big changes going on over in that corner of the harbor. Um, the construction has been, um, it, it's, uh, which I fully support. I mean, that, that boathouse is going to be absolutely stunning, and it's going to, it's going to just, yeah, one more thing that puts the, the harbor front um, on the map. Um, that building will be beautiful. They just put the, the gable end with the doors on it, really. It's just beautiful. Um, over the past, well, for a long time, we, um, we have had a difficult time using that right of way for loading and unloading um, because the elver fishermen use it. Kayakers use it. The festivals that are held in the park use it. Um, there are times when all of Atlantic Ave is closed off. And I've even had one occasion where every parking spot on Atlantic Ave was literally roped off. Um, at which point I had to talk with uh, Audra and um, uh, Chief Gagney. Um, and they finally kind of said, oh, <laughs> didn't mean to go that far. So, so they dialed it back and, and gave us some parking spots. But, um, and now with the construction, it's become, it, it's, yeah, we're juggling the best we can and trying to, you know, make it, we're all working to, to make it work. Um, but there is, there's a certain amount of, um, you know, we talk about having access to use that right of way, but we're denied access all the time. And for us to carry a thousand pounds of ice down Atlantic Avenue from, from C Street is, it's a little bit of a chore. Um, I used to, when I was a kid, yes, I could put, I could put two 20 pound bags. The ice truck would come at five in the morning on a Monday and you'd throw, you know, the competition was to who, who could carry the most bags of cubes down the, down the driveway. And, yeah, you oh, you did not. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, yeah, in the good old days, um, when we were built a lot more rugged and I was about 30 years younger, um, I, I could probably do that. Um, Steve still can do that. And, um, so, in order to allow us to adequately operate and maintain these vessels, and again, this may not even fall into your, to your realm, but I, I think some consideration needs to be given to, um, to allowing us to use that right of way. Um, and I'm not saying exclusively, I'm just saying just, just so you've, maybe this is just a raising an awareness thing. Uh, but just know that for us accessing those vessels, you, there's a wedding every weekend. Yeah, very, paragraph D, it addddresses that. that vehicular access across the library park shall be allowed only for the purposes of loading and unloading on the existing right of way. Yeah, that, so, so, that doesn't, so that doesn't apply to the elver fishermen who park down there and sleep in their cars. That doesn't apply to the construction workers who I mean, we went down, Garth and I were down there yesterday, and I blocked everybody in. I, you know, I was trying to get stuff on and off the boat, and I'm parked halfway up the driveway, and, you know, it's, that's not too big a deal, except that I inconvenienced three of the people who were part of the dive service that's staged in the park right now with those big trailers. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that I, I think the, the point for us is, yes, it's addressed, um, but I would... One of the things that, that we would like to see is that, you know, people understand that we're trying to do, you know, to operate and maintain these vessels. And see, my, my first thought there is that that's a um, library issue. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, can, and, I'll, and I'll work on that. What are the issues with the Elver Fishermen? They just park there and stay oh, there? They, they park there and stay there. Um, kayakers? Uh, kayakers regularly come down the driveway. And they say they're just going to load and unload their kayaks, but some of those folks take a long time. 
uh, an inordinate amount of time. There are people who just come down and park and walk their dogs. All right. And then I'm uh, sorry. I'm just trying to. Can I just yeah, go yeah, through the little yeah, list? And then you said the festivals that just blocks off the street, you can't use it. Well, this, the, well, certainly whenever there's a wedding, the top of the street, um, the uh, the Elm Street end or Main Street end gets blocked off. And so then we have to go the wrong way down a one-way street, and we get a lot of dirty looks. And, and, um, and, and again, we can, it's... We can, I think we can fix those, and same with um, the contractors. Yeah. Working, but. And I part and parcel of that is that people, people then, you know, when there's a festival in the park, they tap into our utilities. You're telling me I've had people cut, we've had people cut, literally cut the lock off of our electrical panel and rewire the panel and then just leave it and walk away. And it's like, well, wait a second. <laughs> you know, that, that bill's in my name. You know, we paid to put those things in. You know, during, we, we renewed all of that service during the park renovation. So it's... You know, there's a, there's a certain amount of how that area is used that um, sure. really slows us down in, in the midst of a think, very busy four-month season and, and sometimes just borders on being really disrespectful of, you know, of what's happening. Cutting in happening. and using your electric, you, who do you think that is? Just people that are operating um, it, festivals it, or whatever? It regularly happens. I believe the Rotary Club does a concert down there on the 4th of July. Is that correct? And they, they do that? They, they, they've, they have specifically cut, or whoever the electrician is, has specifically cut the, the lock that we put on there. We didn't use to lock it, and then it, you know, we came down, it was all rewired. So, at any rate, so, so that's, and there's a phone number on there to call. You know, it reaches Captain Wells and Tobin's house, and, and yeah. you know, well, I, I, so that's a, again, that may be a library issue. It's not an issue on this agreement, but we'll, uh, it's I'll probably more of a police that. issue. Really? Wouldn't you consider okay. that theft of service? I would. Yeah. I, I guess, yeah. Well, we just, the divers down there were plugged into our power post just a month ago. They just walked over and even though it says, you know, we've written right on it. So um, right. I'm going to so I'm gonna go away and, yeah, and let one of the other people talk. So got a lot of work Sorry. to do. I know you do. Thank you, Barry. Uh, I... Ron. Yes. <laughs> Having been there when that excess was built, because the windjammers got kicked out of the place that they were in before that and kicked out of the place they were in before that. The library was very generous and made an, a, a true exception to their basic policy, which was not to allow commercial activity on the premises, to provide access to those windjammers over their property. And we had issues right from day one of people driving down in there leaving their truck and not understanding that they're sharing this access. Is there any signage down there, um, like as you come off of Atlantic onto that drive? Uh, the thing is, yeah, is that there's, there's a small 6 by 24 inch sign that was put in in 1976 and has since been covered by lichens. It's a beautiful sign, the lichens. <laughs> doing well there. Beautiful <laughs> accent, but it's, um, yeah, the sign. And, and there is, there was, a working gate yeah. that so Mr. Ray put in. You bring up the police. Yeah, there was a gate put in at one point, which was an issue between the. Yeah, a, a gate was installed, and, and it property was owner. Locked, and no one said anything to us. But that was a, um, that was an issue between the adjacent property owner and the library right. library committee. Exactly. Library committee stepped up and said, "Okay, here's what the here's this solution. We'll put a gate up and we'll lock it." Yeah, that had nothing to do with us. It, that didn't have anything to do with the windjammers. But the the issue here, and you bring up, and that's what I was going to say. This isn't. Uh, it's 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 easy enough to understand what's taking place here. It's a shared access. Mm -hmm. Then you bring up it's a police issue. Okay, well that comes down to enforcement. Well, well no, I, I'm I, talking I, about I cutting services. cutting a lock on electrical panel. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking. The issue is enforcement. Who's going to ride herd on the people who abuse the privilege and park a vehicle down there which restricts access to other people who have paid good money to have access? That's an, that's an enforcement issue. Yep. And, and it becomes an enforcement issue when people stop taking responsibility for their actions. It's a shared space. Don't block it up. Go down there, unload, 
put your vehicle someplace else, open it up immediately so that the other tenants can get down there and do their loading and unloading. Don't leave your vehicle down there. Just show respect for each other. And if you don't, okay, then it becomes an enforcement issue. It shouldn't have to become an enforcement issue. Well, thanks, you just so. have to act like yeah. mature adults and don't abuse the privilege. I'll look, that, I'll look into that. Is that unreasonable? No, not at all. Is it realistic? <laughs> well, of course it is. It can be. <laughs> of course it is. We can talk about it and nope. make it realistic. Yep. We just did. Great. It's realistic. Garth, that's yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, go ahead. Down the Lewis R. French down there at the head of the harbor. Jerry, this might be a question for you. I, I have a little bit of a, of, of a, um, I'm wondering about the new owners of the American Boathouse in their right of way down that driveway as well. We had an existing relationship with Canals uh, American Boat House that we had, you know, that so we both worked down there together for the last 15 years. I have no idea what the reeds access to that is on that side. Are they allowed to pull down that driveway for unloading and loading also? Uh, I'll look into it, but I believe that they they had an agreement um, just while they were doing construction to be in and out of there. Um, but I will follow up on that. Uh -huh. I didn't think it was to park there. Oh, well, that's, I understand what enforcement is, and chasing Steve, Steve has probably heard enough of us. And, I mean, Steve's not going to chase that, and I likely wouldn't chase it, right? I mean, right. but I, I can at least, right. all, all, that make, all parties rushed. aware that that is, that is not a parking right. lot. I mean, like Ronnie is saying, the act of saying you, can do, you can't do that, and the, how nice it looks to park down there if you are welding up something for that building, they're not... The, they, they just love, everyone loves pulling down there, as do we, right. as do we. And it's, you know, that little sign up there that says loading and unloading, uh, obviously just gets totally ignored or not even seen by most people. But in terms of our businesses, the ability to pull down there, as Ronnie knows, it's, cr it's just critical to be able to do some things. And I don't know, I, I don't want to say that we should have priority to pull down there, but, you know, to come in there in the middle of the summer and not be able to get down there, almost makes it impossible. I don't know what you guys can do to in our leases that allows that. I don't know how much the library has to do with that, but um, something has to be done because if we can't pull, pull there, then we're all the way up on C Street, and it's almost I think this, like if Ray had to park at the post office. I think this will come up when I um, go meet with the library trustees and, and yeah, great, and work on it then. Yeah. Okay, super. Ray. This mic here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not clear about this uh, January 1st lease ending and so on. Um, you know, it's unreasonable to expect that if a lease expired on January 1st, that somebody would be able to move one of these vessels in the middle of the winter. Um, you know, why can't it stay like it is until April? Uh, and then, uh, you know, at least you have a chance to move the vessel. I mean, you know, like there are plenty of people around here who have summer rentals and winter rentals, uh, but, you know, if you don't have the season, then you don't have the season. Well, I, I mean, just just my my initial thought on that. I mean, if your if your agreement is not going to be renewed January first, um, my guess is you would have plenty of notice beforehand, and um, I, I don't I, I just don't see that ever happening where where somebody's going to come up and say, hey, your agreement ended yesterday. I want you to move tomorrow. I don't, I just don't see that happening. Um, well, isn't that what and the, the, the agreement says? Well, it, it does. That's the thing that's teeth. Yeah. It's just teeth. Yeah. I don't think the town's going to bite. Um, well, I understand you know, the, that. The, the town has. You need the teeth then. Oh. Well. What is the purpose of moving it to January? It's for convenience? 
Uh, you said something ones. about all the it, leases it, come it, and do at the same time. Yes, it's, it's so all the, all the commercial vessels in the harbor are due at the same time. So it's it, because the way it's working now, we have we have uh, the day sailors. They have all their requirements and needs that they want to present. Okay, well that affects the wind jammers. So so you're not here. You're not part of that discussion. So what this does is it brings everybody to the table at the same time, all in the same discussion. And it's like, well, if, if they do this, they're in our way when we operate here and, and vice versa. So, so that's how it all gets worked out. Because the way it is now, um, the, the day sailors show up, they get all their, their their issues taken care of in January, and now, now you're coming, for instance, and you're saying, well, you know, part of this stuff that was approved in the boilerplate doesn't work for us. Well, it was all taken care of before with the day sailors. Without their input. Without your input. So what this does is it, it puts all the input together at the same time. No, the, the other point, thing the it point does Mark, is that that this date system was established without their input. That's the point that I'm making. Yep. This date that you've chosen is arbitrary. If you want everybody to come together at the same time, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But the date that you've chosen is what he has issue with. Oh, that's why we're discussing it. Yeah. So, so what do you propose? So, yeah, no, but, but, but I mean, yeah. I hear you I hear talking. It. You've got a, the, the problem here is that there's only one of these groups that actually uses their lease in the winter because they're storing their boats there. True. Right. Uh, and you could add a, wherever it talks about expiring, that if someone's lease is truly expiring, that you, you cover it with a, essentially a carryover that gets them to May 1st or something. Perfect. On the last year of their lease. Perfect. So how about, Thank how about you. a paragraph that says, upon termination of this lease, um, you have four months to remove your vessel. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that works. I'm just trying okay. to see if somebody was going to, let's say somebody was going to buy the Mary Day. Yep. But they wanted to take it someplace else. Yep. And then somebody else said, well, I want that bird. And they put an application for that berth. And the person who bought the Mary Gay is now, uh, you know, they're going to take it to Boston. But they don't want to take it to Boston January 1st. <coughs> yep. And, you know, the transaction may not have completed in October when they could have taken it. So it just gives them a chance to say, okay, uh, you know, we have a safe berth for this vessel. Have a carry, just have a carryover clause added. Yep. And maybe they pay for it, or maybe it's part of the lease. But if it's terminating, that they have X amount of time to get everything out of there. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Done. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Problem solved. Thanks for bringing that up, Ray. Yeah. Good job. Okay, let's move on. Now, so how, how do we proceed? Good question. I'll go down through each paragraph and uh, discuss it. Fees is just basic. I mean, that is, uh, um, it's all spelled out in the fee structure for when payments are due. I did wonder in that one if instead of in the last word, it's the discretion of the town, isn't it the select board really that just to make clear who has the discretion? Um, it's not at the discretion of the harbor master. Right. I guess that's what I was concerned about. Right. Like, uh, uh, let's see. We so discussed the cost there, you can ask the, att the attorney, but I think that that would, using those terminologies would mean the town acts through the select board. Well, something like that. Right. Anyway, so I, I don't know if it needs to be changed. Must bring for the community there the following season. Well, the, the introductory paragraph 
It refers to both, the town of Camden and then the regulations which have been established by the select board. But that doesn't, so that, that defines a distinction rather than a mm -hmm. connection as far as I'm concerned. And we discussed at length that the select board is the only ones who has the authority to um, you know, of the cause loss of these agreements or mm -hmm. use. So I just think we should be specific if we. So we're going to change that to select board. To select board. Okay, paragraph B. We haven't seen a Schedule A yet, but I assume there is a Schedule A, which is the docking plan for the one jammer. Yeah, uh, we have one right here. Yeah, we made one. <laughs> when <you> see it. <laughs> so, so this is what's existing. Um, I've also created a um, docking arrangement that includes the the mooring arrangements, um, for which the town, I believe, is responsible for the maintenance and care of. The this, blocks. this is the Schedule A that has that, been that attached the to the schedule. previous? Correct. Yes, sir. Ray, do you have a Schedule A part of your agreement? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure we drew one up. Uh, it may not have been updated when they put the new dock system in. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Can I keep this? Or is this your only copy? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we just had that right. Yeah, I, I do have a, I do have an updated what could be updated as Schedule A because it does show the <coughs> the design of the mooring system, um, the bottom chains that connect the four five blocks that secure those vessels, um, as as well as a more detailed view of what the mooring system in the beach looks like. If if you folks would like to have that. Four color glossy photo. Oh, with be nice. circles and arrows and a yeah. paragraph oh, on the back. Oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, we're going to have to uh, refine Schedule A a little bit. Paragraph C. Well, so on, oh, no, we're, we're talking about. I'm sorry. Go ahead. On Schedule A, do we um, identify the the moorings and that the town is required to maintain? The moorings, and chains, etc. Anyway, I haven't seen that. Is is that the case? Does the town service those moorings annually, like you know, all the rest of them? Yeah, That's the part of the, uh, it is, and I believe it's in there somewhere. Uh, repair and maintenance F. It's paragraph F on uh, public landing and paragraph E on library. Okay. <clears throat> While we're on B, yes. I'm not sure I understand the verbiage to alter the annual term. Uh, I understand what it says, but I'm not sure I understand the intent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or if it's just a carryover before it was a three year term. So it's not an annual term anymore. It's a, Take, take out annual. Alter. I believe the intended meaning for that would be for if we wanted to like move moorings or the dock configuration. I think that's or yeah. about left and a new one wanted to come in. Or yeah. dredging maintenance, but I think that's covered. Right, dredging is covered in a different area. Well. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't. So, <clears throat> it's, it's, subject to the right of the town. Okay. It's a double-edged sword. We're trying to protect the interests of the town. Mm -hmm. Part of that's 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 part of what this. I mean, we're negotiating an agreement, and we're representing hopefully the best interests of the town. Correct. Okay. Well, that would include that we do everything we can to try to ensure that the windjammers stay in Camden Harbor. Okay. That would be a step towards protecting the best interests of the town. The town's not going to be the same without them. Mm -hmm. So we've got this line between protecting 
the town, for instance, from liability or, you know, that aspect of it. But aesthetically, we've got a responsibility to the town to make sure these schooners don't go someplace else, whatever it takes. So all this flexibility that we're building into this and giving all of this power to the town and the select board or the harbor master may end up being counterproductive to maintaining the aesthetic of the inner harbor, which is entirely dependent on these schooners being here. Do you guys see anything yes, here that would... Well, they, they used to go out for a week, and the town still leave? existed and looked pretty nice. In the summer, they were here for like one night in the old days. I think, I think you understand my, my, my meaning. meaning. But yeah. not entirely. But that's, well, that's the reason they let the day sailors stay there sometimes. Okay. Ronnie, I think, is doing a nice job of, of actually uh, voicing some concerns we have as non-lawyers on this agreement, is that a lot of it looks scary to us from the fact that the town can change everything, and we wonder what we're signing. I went into a bank when I bought the boat, and they, I used to, I have always signed my agreement, and a lot of this stuff just carries over from that. But they were like, this is not worth anything. Yeah. This doesn't say you can be here next year. This doesn't say anything mm -hmm. about you being able to be here. Um, so, I, you know, from a lawyer's point of view, I, don't, I know the town's trying to protect itself, but all these things about just being able to change the agreement, I'm, or the select board can just change the agreement. It seems a little bit, I don't know, unfair in a way to us. I mean, but perhaps it's necessary, and that's how this stuff works, but it, it, um, the select board can change the annual term. That means that it can change the annual fee, right? So if we pay 4000 this year, we could pay 10000 next year. I think that B is a carryover that has no particular meaning. It yeah. ought to just be subject to the rights of or the other provisions of this addendum and the base agreement or whatever. Just leave it at that. I don't well, think we're going to be... I'm, I'm wondering why is the town getting involved in their decision as to where the boats are kept? I don't know how, how that relates to this. Huh? Schedule A. It, they are bound by this paragraph B to follow Schedule A. Schedule A is a drawing of specific schooners being in a specific location. Yeah, what's the problem with that? They may decide that that doesn't work for them. Well, it's, happened it's in not the an past. agreement with them as an association that they can mix and match. Each of them signed an agreement to have a spot. I don't see how that's a problem. Yeah, I, I agree so, with you. So, I mean, there has to be some order. And they agree on it. What if they don't? But what if they don't, right? The town has to be responsible for assigning They spots. want to switch their locations. They come in and say, we'd like to We can to do an, an amendment, amendment so that an amended these two boats switch and then schedule A. Someone yeah. decides it. Yeah, I, I, I think just, just trying to overcomplicate that. Just as a matter of course, um, we, uh, we have over time kind of pushed our elbows out within the confines of those bursts, and that's what's really important to know, is that those bursts define who can be where. Angelique could probably come bow in to Mary Day's birth. Mary Day could not go stern in to Angelique's birth. And any time any of you guys want to come on down and take the boat out of the harbor, um, you'll understand why we're bow out. Um, not that it can't be done, Hawkins family did it for years, but it's a heck of a lot easier to come out of our birth bow first than it is stern first. Um, some of these people have been witness to my escapades trying it. Um, so it's, yeah, so in some ways the, the agreement, which uh, the Schedule A could be changed, I think, if we felt a need to change that. Um, I don't know that we do right now. Um, but but there are restrictions about actually how much water is in the berth. Like, you can't move Mary Day 10 more feet to the west. She'd be hard to ground, literally within 10 feet. It's um, the holes that are dredged there are literally holes. There's so we're, we're going to have to move on. We, we have to be out of here by 10 o'clock. So we are on a time constraint. So I suggest that it be that we... Uh, I essentially ask the town attorney why we can't just strike the part after the comma that says subject to the right. So, so just do subject just to schedule A. Period at the end of schedule A. 
as set forth and depicted in Schedule A, um, period. Or, or, or subject so to the terms I, of this agreement. Why don't we just do that? We'll strike it. Boom. Good. Okay. I have one question on C. Yes. It's in my relation to what we are just hearing, because this relates to the increasingly I mean, in the olden days, when some people on the day, Merry Day, I, uh, you know, you'd go out for a week and come back. That's one navigational conundrum. If they get shorter and shorter, and these are bigger boats, is there a problem with the schooners? If they were doing nothing but day trips, or nothing but one night overnight trips, does it create a problem of navigation in the harbor? Yeah, I would say that, obviously, if all of them were doing day trips, um, then it would definitely take, I'd have to hire more crew, and we'd have to be work even more on our communication. These captains are very good at communicating and knowing when they're coming in and out. Uh, the day, day, day sailors, uh, I mean, sometimes I look at it and I'm like, I, that skipper should not be doing that, but it's pretty rare. You know, Mary Day and the, all the the head of the harbor ones, Ray, they always will, will be watching out to see what the Dale Sills are doing. They'll call and say, um, you know, the, the, the blue catch that's coming coming down Wayfair, just let you know I'm coming out. You know, I don't know if you heard my security call. There's a lot of communication. We would have, have to actually up that up even more if we were going to. Well, I, just, I don't have an opinion on it. I just think it's see, since we just also talked about reducing what an overnight trip means to one night. Uh, that the people who do know the logistics take into account, does frequency become a problem? Sure, yeah. I think there's a traffic pattern, isn't there? Aren't you coming in on the Wayfair side, going out on the you, side? For the most part, yeah. <laughs> So there's one exception yeah. to the traffic pattern. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I, it looks to me like channels are kept open so that the windjammers have access to the inner harbor. Yeah. What are we changing when they're out that doesn't? I think we they just brought up the fact what, that the volume is different. The traffic. Yeah, the traffic. There's increase in traffic. The increase Nothing else traffic. changes. It just means you have to be more, you know, up to date on who's doing what and make sure that boats are communicating, you know, to other boats. That's it. Let's do diligence on their part. Exactly. That's well, not, you might have that, that doesn't fall into any come and go. police. Well, well it's, it's how does it affect the harbor? How does it affect other boaters? You know, that that's... I think that's what the concern might be. Um, it's a balance. I don't know. I mean, it's a big draw to to watch this, the wind jammers come and go. You know, people like to see that. So it's yeah. It's a, you know, it's a open it up a can of worms it's, it's a, to try to limit the number of times they can come and go. Because uh, well, it's always been limited. Because what we're doing is increasing right. the well, number. But it hasn't been limited because of traffic. It's been limited because of a definition, which was established 30-some years ago because they were trying to define which berths were windjammer berths and which berths were day sailor berths. That's why the definition exists in the first place. We're ameliorating those definitions for the sake of well, we are, ability but, for but the industry. What are we talking about right now? Where are, where are we on this draft? C. C. Okay, let's keep going. Questions on section C also. So one is that we're changing um, third line with the duration of three days. So we're saying with a duration of one night or more. Is that correct? With, with a duration of one, yes, night. one night. Okay. And then um, we, it says that uh, day sales are permitted upon seven days notice to the harbor master. Is that is that correct? <coughs> That's current practice. So yep. you know seven days in advance when one of the wind jammers are doing a day sale. That was up until about a year, a year ago, two years ago. Now it's, you know, they do as, uh, as soon as they can. They try to do it with seven. There are a few times where someone will get a, uh, a trip that's, that's, you know, a day, a day sale 
now that we changed it to to 15. Right. And what so, what notice do you think you need? I, I would say I need, you know, 24 hours would be nice because then I can talk to other schooners and say, hey, just so you know, this, there's a scheduled day sale. It's a little more traffic like you were talking about. So it's a little more, it just helps with the communication. So you want to change that to a 24 hour notice? I think it's more reasonable. Right? It's the seven days right now? Yeah. yeah. What about 48 hours or as um, soon as practicable? I'm just thinking, uh, remember, this needs to go to the select board to get approved. Yeah. And the three days was pretty, um, I think they were, at least prior years, they, there was a reason why they wanted it at three days and not one days, even though the definition says one night, right? So mm -hmm. now we're saying we're going to get rid of that three day or three night and go down to one night, which the definition of wind jammer yeah, allows. Yeah, definition already is meaning, you, yeah, like you said, one night. And I'm just, you know, oftentimes you, you got to look who's got to approve these things and what brought them, you know, to the point where they were originally. And yeah, I'm just so, wondering if all of a sudden you go to take this to the select board going from seven days to 24 hours. No, we're, 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 we're talking about two different things. Yeah, sir, okay. This is Thanks. notice. This is we're, notice. We're talking about, about notice, 24-hour notice. Right. From For when the boat goes out. What does the agreement currently say? Seven days. Seven-day notice. Right. So that means if if they decide they're going to go out for a uh, <laughs> separate day sale. Day sale, yeah. They go out for a separate day sale, they're going to have to notify him seven days beforehand and we're recommending that we drop that to notify the harbor master 24 hours i mean i get that and that's yeah that's, you, that's i mean jimmy brings up a good point you could make it 48 hours because yeah, if you it's practicable yeah i don't mm, yeah, i think it, 48 hours i think having a number is important I'd, yeah. yeah i'd rather you know. have it be fixed i mean well i think Honestly, right now the 24 agreement hours, says, it, does, does that give you because I'm, I, we haven't actually got this in here the way it's worded now, but I would assume the reason to notify you is that you are able to figure out, well, there's not some other boat that's going to be here already. Yeah. If, someone, said, if someone says that to me, that I'm going to then, I'm going to do a mass, you know, text to all the other skippers. I mean, you know, they're all going to be in different parts of the bay and they'll be doing stuff and they'll get it and they'll probably be like, oh, okay, good. Thanks, Steve. But can you imagine? What if they all said the same thing at the same time? To the point where you'd be saying, uh, "You need to go out between nine and ten because whatever." That day's not here, but it could be. But it could. It and could with come. These, yeah. With these agreements, yeah. that, that's, that's what it's like in New York Harbor. You know, you, you call New York Harbor to, to leave your port, to leave your berth. They'll say, tied. "You know, well, this boat's leaving. This boat's leaving." You know, they'll tell you what's going on. Everything. Yeah. Well, that was all established. I've worked there. That was all established because of Homeland Security. That's that. I mean, New York traffic is one thing. They want to. They, sure with New York, they want to know. I, but I am concerned <laughs> going, that yeah. a, uh, late We're not, July after, Sunday afternoon, and someone deciding, well, I'm just going to depart then, and you've got all these ridiculous boats that are going to kayaks, rowboats, motorboats, billions of people. That I would think that there would just be mm -hmm. times when it's, you know, if you're going to take a big boat in and out of there, that well, maybe you don't go at three o'clock on Sunday afternoon. For sure. I think that's the reasoning. That, that's, that's why we know the time. So are we all good with, what, 24 hours or 48 hours? 24. 48. <laughs> <laughs> 30, 36. <laughs> I just, uh, I'm just not sure. I, I, I really don't understand the reasoning. I mean, I, when I ask this question, my voice maybe goes up. It's not that I don't have my own answer. I'm wondering what your answer is. It's not that I don't know. I'm wondering why is it, why, why is it here in the days. first place? I mean, are you well, escorting schooners in to yeah, make sure that? Well, I don't this know why the original seven-day thing was in place. I don't know. I wasn't okay. here when I did that. All right. So he, he needs notice. When the wind jammer's going out, he needs notice, and I, I can see, you know, I can bring up justification for that. I mean, Camden Classic Cup. If we got, or if, or if there's another, you know, hundred footer coming in the harbor, you know. You have to know. Yeah, well, a perfect coming. example is Fourth of July when Yacht Club wants to have fifty thousand kids doing a parade, yes. and then all of a sudden I've got you know five windjammers leaving at the same exact time. That's obviously a recipe for disaster. Yes. So you go out as a guide 
and or tell the Windjammers, hey, by, can you guys dude. hang out for a half hour, let your folks have another cup of coffee, watch the kids blow their horns and do their celebration, and then leave. Yeah. So it's just a little bit of communication between the two factions. But it requires... Uh, I just, I'm just trying to get a handle on what, so you're right. it, what it requires from you is that you get in the Harbor Master's boat or the yeah, or whatever, well, and well, you go out there and just make sure the kids don't sail into the channel while some big boat's coming that doesn't have, it's a, driven by a yawl boat, doesn't, something have, like that, doesn't yeah. really have reverse. Yep. All right. We're going to have to get through this whole document. 48 hours would be adequate. Yep. And Steve and his crew are fabulous. Yep. At helping us, um, <coughs> give our security calls in the outer harbor. They are fabulous. Jimmy Leah was always there with one of the boats, helping to, with a cow catcher, kind of clear the channel. So well, that's that's, okay. that's what you feel your obligation is to the schooners coming and going is to pave the way to help out. Yeah, make sure no one pulls out behind him. So what works, but so you're in favor of 24 hours. Yeah. 24, 48. It doesn't matter to me as long as I get notice. I put down 48. Next. Uh, the last question I have on this is for the um, library park addendum. So I guess my question is, we are creating something that would expand the ability of these businesses to, um, to operate, to uh, allow them to take day sales as they, as they have for the last two years. Right. Um, is the library able to uh, allow them to load day sail passengers at the head of the harbor. So these vessels, if they are allowed to do 15 day sails, um, 49 passengers a pop, is the library going to be okay with them loading those day sail passengers? And I think that might be a question for the um, library trustees when you meet with them because we are, we the town, are creating an agreement and my, my concern is that we're permitting something that we're actually not authorized to permit. Well, doesn't the last sentence cover what you said? And we the trustees. No, we, are we are not doing that. I mean, the select board has already made that right. decision. They've already made that ruling, and we are just putting what they have what they have voted on in this agreement. Well, we're creating a new three-year agreement here. We are. So that's a new agreement. It, it's a new agreement, but it's based on what based they on have precedent, but already I mean, they may determined. Have they may have determined. I'm just asking Jeremy to. And, and, uh, but but the other thing is, right? This we are not making these decisions. We are make we are presenting our our draft to them. They're they're going to look at that worse. and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I guess so. Those windjammers that have operated as when you've operated as a day sailor, in essence, these 15 times, I don't know how many you, of you have. Actually, in, in deference to the, to the Board of Trustees of the library and yeah. to the park, actually the three of us at the head of Camden Harbor never requested the 15, so our license agreements have remained three. three. Um, so... Oh, so you don't... So we don't do... We haven't even asked for permission, to, and it's not written in our license agreements at all. Well, here's, here's, here's a thought. I mean, do you want the 15? Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. This is a, a long... For the purposes of resale of the scooter, yes. I want 15. It, it allows us more options. Right now, I don't do... I haven't done a day sale. I've owned the boat for 18 years. I haven't done a single one, ever. But I want that in there because this business is changing, and if I need to do them, I'd like the ability to do them. So Ray changed his business and change the lease. I never actually went through the act of changing my lease, so mine still says three. But I like the idea of it being 15. I've also never, I've done one one-night cruise ever, but I like that ability to change that thing. Every other boat in Rockland can do them, and so it's nice for us to be able to compete with them well, if it comes up. Well, a one-night cruise or a day sail? Either. Either. Anything. I mean, we're the only boats that say you can, as of now, you can't do anything. Only boats, I mean, in the main, whole main area, not Camden. But in, against the boats in Rockland, they can all do one-night cruises. Can they do day sales? They can do anything. They can do all day sales if they want to. They're not altered by that at all. They, they could change their entire businesses over to day sales, and some have. In fact, over the last couple of years, two different boats 
went from doing windjammer style to so day sale. This agreement Please. will apply to all windjammers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So you'll be able to do that if you'd like. Right. We will be able to do that with the okay of the library trustees. Now, I personally am not sure why the library trustees still have a say in that, but I can understand the town politics of why they do. But the fact that they can say yes or no to that seems a little bit overbearing to me. But um, they're providing the access. They're yeah. providing the access, but I question why that's in there. I think it's a thing from probably back when you had the boat when they were very nervous about the whole idea of all these people coming in and out. Now we have people are just coming. It's a public park. People exactly. I don't know they what want. they're limiting in terms of people walking back and forth. We're not parking. We wouldn't be parking on the streets because it'd be over two hours or over. So, so I'm not sure what role they. Saying, as Barry says, that everyone's forgotten about it. When we call to say that we're going to do that, right. I've actually never even done it. <laughs> so I'm not sure what the what their role is anymore in in deciding that for us. It's my opinion. I'll, I'll follow up and I'll let them know that our you know we're all of these agreements are going to be 15 days, potential 15 day, and that's what it is. Right. And throw I'll, another wrench in the works here. We. Day sailors are doing basically two hour trips. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Windjammers probably aren't going to do two hour trips. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to be an all day sail. Is that right? I mean, I'm just, just guessing. Is that, I mean, yeah, is that. Obviously, it's too short, you know. So, yeah. We wouldn't yeah. 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 Uh, do that. Yeah. Can't yeah. How long are your trips, right? Your day sales? Four hours. Okay, let's move you on. Do many more than one a day? Be, uh, if we're concerned about traffic, uh, that was the last thing that was brought up, was yep. traffic. If we're concerned about traffic and we're going to give the windjammers the right to do day sales 15 days, we're going, to day sales the we're going to define it as an, an all-day sale or I, one per, one, one one per sale day. per day. One sale. That's, that's where I was going with that mm -hmm. question. I mean, I, I, I don't know whether we want to get further That should be written in, into the agreement and not into a definition and the ordinance that would need right. to be amended and approved by town. That should just uh, be put into the agreement. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really see this, uh, you know, traffic as an issue. I mean, if you say you could do one trip a day, well, well, if we're going to do a trip, uh, say, from uh, 11 to 3, you know, there's going to be traffic going out at 11, coming back at 3. If you're going to make a, a trip from 4 to 8 for a dinner cruise, let's say, there's going to be traffic going out at 4 o'clock. There's going to be traffic coming back in at 8 o'clock. One doesn't affect the other. What You know, if there's... If, if there's a boat in the way at one o'clock, uh, it's not going to be there, you know, at six o'clock or whatever. And so, Ray, you, yeah. you say that because you're always in the bigger boat. <laughs> well, I, the right, I have the right to be there, and I have the, I have the right of way. I mean, you know, they are limited in their mobility, and you know, we always give security calls. Um, you know, we're trained professionals. We've been in and out of this harbor, you know, thousands of times. Uh, you know, if somebody comes out, uh, you know, in a kayak or leaves the dock without looking and doesn't respect our security calls, I mean, that's not, not our problem. Why don't you try limiting their ability to access the harbor? I mean, I, I'm not saying you should, but... Why, why are we the ones who have the right of way legally, uh, the ones that are, are being, you know, limited in our ability to use the, ch the, the channels? Unfortunately, as licensed masters, we're held to a higher standard. Did a kayaker. That's yeah. right. A kayaker can say, well, I didn't know, but we can't say that. So we are held well, to a higher standard. Uh, we're having an extended conversation yes, about something are. that may not be an issue. Exactly. I mean, if we had reports of collisions that were piling up on us and it was occupying the harbor master's time to go testify 
in court regarding collisions in Camden Harbor, that would be one thing, but I don't think we're there yet. Exactly. So as long as everybody so, is doing due diligence and <clears throat> giving the security calls on 13 and 16 and following the procedure that is acceptable in the industry, then why isn't it all okay? I, I think the select board, um, and I would think you guys, um, I know the select board for sure wants to, I mean, the harbor master is there for a reason, and he's the one that manages um, navigation and traffic in the harbor, and they want to make sure he has that ability, and they don't want to be micromanaging um, everyone's operations, and that's up to the harbor master, and I'm pretty confident that's the select board's view on that. So, are we all clear? Paragraph C, what we've done there is we're calling it a, a duration of uh, one day or, or more and a 48 hour notice to the harbor master. And those are the changes we're making there. A duration of one night or more. Or one night or more. So, we're taking out the three in front of 15. Yes, that's a typo. Changing the seven days to 48 hours. Yes. And we're changing the three days to uh, one night. Okay. <clears throat> paragraph. Paragraph D on the library. Uh, we've already discussed this. Uh, vehicular access. Cross Library Park. Um, and paragraph D on uh, public landing. Wait a minute. Are we bouncing back and forth between we are. Park, park addendum and. Yes. So paragraph D on the public landing just uh, pertains to soliciting on the dock for sale of tickets. Mm -hmm. This is saying that they can't, you can't sell or market tickets mm -hmm. for day sales um, on the public landing. Is that correct? Um, you can, that second, the second sentence seems to a bit contradict the first sentence. Nothing shall prohibit the licensee from discussing or promoting. There's verbal solicitation. I'm, I'm a little. I think what that's trying to say is that that uh, when when you decide to do a day sale, you can't set up a table mm -hmm. like the day sailors and sell day sale tickets. Yes. Um, then you should stop after the first sentence. That's old language. Yes. Well, the second one, by using the word promoting, contradicts mm -hmm. it. You could have somebody there with a little flag and a balloon saying, Come yeah, I think on. we should strike that, that whole second sentence. Second right? sentence is gone. Where, where was that? Okay, so E on uh, public landing, parking. Parking shall be provided for one vehicle for the period of the vessel. The, the per, for the parking shall be provided for one vehicle for the period the vessel is berthed. Okay, with that? That's per vessel. It's per vessel, and that's while you're at berth. So what that means is that that when your boat goes out to sail, you can't leave your vehicles there for the three days or whatever. Well, it's, is, never, it's never three days. Okay. Uh, what do you do when it's not you can't have a vehicle? Uh, you know, you come off a trip and then you, know, you don't have a vehicle to transport passengers back to their cars. Well, how, uh, how, how do you operate now? He needs a truck we, there. We have, we have, uh, three permits and uh, typically we have uh, a work truck and then my truck that I'm coming and going all the time and the third one uh, well in the 
springtime when we have you know, contractors working on the boat mm -hmm. uh, with all their tools and stuff, we, we give that to them. But during the during the season, uh, we typically only have one vehicle around. And and most of most of that time, you also have one vessel at the dock, don't you? On on our schedule during the summer, uh, all boats leave on Monday, and uh, you know one or two will come back on Wednesday, then leave on Thursday, then back in on Friday, and. Right, but you, you see, the concern here is that you've 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 got a day sailor parking permit. So then, this gives you three per permits for your wind jammers. So now you've got four parking permits down there in the dock. Yeah, and, well, and are they all there at the same time? And 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 the point is, I mean, I've can, been a can, big proponent of day sailors not having a permit. As, happy that as give me. Up my permit because uh, you know it's not a necessity. Yeah, it's a convenience, and you know I pay for it. Everybody's getting it. Everybody else is using it. I won't say that I never use it, but rarely ever use uh, that fourth permit. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, for the most part, uh, well, we have the work truck. Yeah, but am I correct that the the permit uh, the agreement for the wind jammers at the head of the harbor does not include any parking? They can load and unload only, so they have no parking rights on public property. Whereas this addendum, currently it sounds like, allows for this um, this group three three permits, one mm -hmm. per vessel. So um, and they're the same price. They're the same, the fees are the same for both of these. So um, I think saying that this this permit can only be used. Well, we don't we don't charge there. for the day sellers. So uh, the select board is already about, established. There's no no financial benefit of a parking permit for the public I'm talking, landing. I'm talking about benefit for the wind jammers trying to put everything on an equitable footing here. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that to have to have one that is at the public landing and comes with parking and one that's at the head of the harbor and doesn't is interesting and then to have this he means say, that equal yeah and then to have this and say that this actually um allows one per vessel even if the vessel is not at the not at the dock i think this is a very very reasonable um as drafted reasonable exception we always have actually gotten a parking permit it's excluded yeah. in this new one, but we've always received one. Uh, for parking where? On no, on Atlantic Avenue. Yeah. So we don't get a ticket for two hours. Okay. It's not in this, it should be in there, I guess. Yeah. We can totally miss it, but we have, we do receive that. I don't, I don't think it's in my lease either. Oh, really? So they made a big deal about it being in the, you know, should it be in the day sailor agreement or not. So it's never in an auto lease for, you know, 30 something years. Look at section 10, your current agreement. Okay. So we need to uh, add parking for the library. Mm -hmm. Atlantic. Are they different permits? I don't know. I think they just—they're all the—they're just little plastic tags. They have the vessel name on it as a vessel name. They're all the same. The season. Mm -hmm. They are. Yeah. Yeah. We've gotten ticketed by parking over in the. The deep state. These are pretty good things to have. I, I mean, I usually sell mine. We need some of these. <laughs>
<laughs> How much? <laughs> yeah. Talk offline. Okay. Next. Uh, paragraph E and paragraph F for the same. Everybody good with those? Paragraph F and paragraph G are also the same. Uh, no, they're not the same. There's something different. It just defines it as extending from the library park as opposed right. to... Yep. But that's where yeah. you could say the Camden's responsible for them if we were going to kind of does. Um, Change it from the library, change Atlantic Ocean to Inner Harbor. Yeah. Uh, library. Item F. Library Park to the... Library Access. Harbor. A lot of floats. <laughs> <laughs> So here we refer to Schedule A again. <coughs> uh, I guess our first reference to Schedule A is, is the location of it, and this is the maintenance of it, so we're fine. Grants licensee a license to use a system of ramps, etc. Like item B, it's kind of redundant. I think so. It's the right birth of the vessel is set forth on Schedule A. Maybe those two things could be combined. So we'll eliminate eliminate B altogether. Mm -hmm. well, if you think birthing is a valuable term in B. That could be somehow incorporated. In but here in F it says it grants to, to use a system of grants, floats, yeah. and warnings. I mean, yeah. use. I like the word birthing. So. Uh, well, that keeps it sorted out as to which boat goes in which to space. Birth. To birth. To my to. Birth and use. Actually, both G and F use birthing at the very end. For the purpose of maintaining birthing slips. Right. I'd suggest moving F to where B is, as a matter of fact, just for the sake of continuity, yep. defining what the whole thing is. Right. Call that B. We're going to eliminate B as it exists. B. Right. Put, put, put a longer paragraph up there. B is out. Okay. Now, uh, H, G. Do you have something on G? Keep going. Oh. No, I have something at the end. Okay. G and H maintains the right to amend this agreement at sole discretion. That was weird. I mean, I think you made a good point about some kind of 60 days, 108, some kind of. Well. I'm not quite sure what the point is to. <laughs> inside a unilateral right to completely change an agreement it basically makes it just a license which is revocable and well I mean if we want to be the town should be able to kick ass then yes leave it in there but if the purpose is to actually have a meaningful agreement for three years well the, the and the lawyers have determined this is not a lease it's a license it is a license, it is but like a, a driver's license. license, you know, they don't take it away without due process. <laughs> the one thing that's not in here that is in the day sailors is the three years was granted on the annual review with the harbor master, so that if there is poor performance or some kind of, we didn't factor that into the windjammers 
Right. And, and I wonder if that fits here in G, that, that then there is a Isn't conversation. The, it's, it's actually in the boilerplate. It's in the boilerplate, yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, so the, oh, you okay. have the annual review as well? For the wind jamming? It's in the boilerplate. Yeah. Okay. But the, the date happens to, that is, he's required to give that, happens to be one day before the release renewal period. There you go. So he gives us one day from when he has to tell you and the select board. So what are, what are those days? Well, it says that, that he has to tell by December 31st, the harbor master and the harbor committee has to have the recommendations to the select board. And then our, our lease would renew the next day. That seems like a rather quick period of time. I think he was going to do it in September. Is this the same? Well, He'll do it before he gets put in the day sailor. Yeah. It's the commercial passenger license Bar. agreement, yes. Yes. So it would be. It's the, it's the boilerplate agreement. I remember we talked about it, but I didn't see it. Giving us one day period. Right, but I thought right. that the Paragraph review four. process was like starting November 1st. December 31st is when it's required. It's no, required. that's when there's it's a done by. But yeah. Finished by. But there's no, there's no, nothing that says when it has to start by. It's true. Right? So, can we say at the end of, at the, end of the season or something? Says he doesn't have to do so prior to yeah. December 31st. We, so, to be fair, four. we did discuss that it would be an end of season thing, yeah. but you're right. It's, yeah, exactly. it's, one, it's one thing to have a conversation. I think it's There's a lot of things that we've had conversations yeah, about. Yeah, I know. We're just kind of saying, well, that's always been that way. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 10 o'clock. Wow. We're going to have to wrap it up. Can I throw one more comment, please? And sure. I think this is pretty important. Um, in the last license agreement, the fee structure for the three years was set out. And that was done because um, at one point in time, in the deep dark past, uh, there was great consternation about astronomical increases um, that were proposed not by the Harbor Committee, but by the Select Board. The idea even being floated that we should just put it out to the highest bidder. And at that point in time, this schedule of, of rates was included, which is not included in this. So this is the last this is the one about to expire. Um, and it was at the time the town manager suggested that the fees not increase more than 3% or some number, help me write, con connected to the consumer price index. And I don't understand math nearly that well. But, but that would be extremely helpful for us. And I think it would save the town, perhaps you folks, uh, annual angst and you, hand wringing. So should be key I, to some sort of a limit of annual increase. Correct. Yes. Yeah. That's that's all. So are in, in item A in the addendum here it says fee shall be blank per year. Understood, but recognizing so, that so if we, recognizing that there may be a need yeah. for a price increase. Yeah. You know, oh, that's that's go. Right. You know, it, it, the budget doesn't go down every year. See, I, up, so. yeah, I mean, you're looking at it from a negative perspective. I'm looking at it from a positive perspective. I'm saying, like, if we do it your way and you say the fee should not increase more than 10 percent per year, that tells the select board, well, we'll increase it 10 percent this year. Yeah. And well, I didn't say 10, I said huge. I, I know. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I, I just wanted no, the to make a point. The problem was, it was left up to the, to the select but, board's imagination, and there was one yeah, person that so, and, and my, my feeling is, well, okay, if you've, you've got it in here and this is the fee, that it would probably stay the same for the next three years. So, I mean. No, but Barry's concern is. I know. I mean, I mean they can raise it. Yearly, but only because it's happened. Yeah, um, it's the only reason. Okay. It's the only reason yeah. I bring it up is because it, it did happen. Mm -hmm. and All right. Mm -hmm. As they say, you're a product of your last. I, I would like to point out in the day sailor addendum, not the second vote, just the first the day sailor addendum item A. The fees, the last statement in the fee section says payable January first each year, subject to an annual review each year. And in a recent select board meeting, there was a comment by a harbor committee or a select board member that that could apply to the fee, that the fee would be subject to an annual review each year. Mm -hmm. If you write it in here. Pardon me? 
if you write it in here as part of the lease or agreement. If it would correspond to the day sailor. Okay. So Thank we you. have we have to wrap up. Good meeting, guys. So well, if, if you guys give Liz all your emails, then what we'll do is we'll redraft this, send you a copy of it for your review, and we'll get together again. Thank you, guys. Thank you all so much. Let's define our next meeting. Next meeting. Um, February 4th. Are we going to Tuesdays now? Tuesdays, 8 a.m. It helps me a lot because I'm on the mountain Wednesdays, Thursday, Friday, all day. 30 not work for people? Yeah, it doesn't work for me. 8, 8 o'clock is great. Winter hours. <laughs> Josh, you have a job, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm on. February 4th. Winter Fest. Okay. Uh, so, um, adjourned. meeting adjourned. A couple of weeks. Bruce, sorry. Maybe next, maybe next week. Or next two weeks. I probably yep. would have forgot everything. Two weeks. <laughs> A month, yes. <laughs> two weeks, though. No. Elliot, like to. Uh, this is just a pile of worthless paper.